Etsy sellers are upset and they have very good reason to be. There's a lot of things that have happened in the last 12 months where Etsy is not doing anything about it. The CEO, Josh Silverman, hopefully is going to see this message. If you are, Josh, hi, my name is Scott. Nice to meet you. There's an entire community of Etsy sellers who are trying very, very hard to sell products, create a livelihood off of the Etsy platform. Legitimately, the problems that we're seeing and that everyone is talking about is there's a lot of problems that are happening. One of them being Etsy accounts being banned, being shut down, not just new sites or new shops. It's ones that have had hundreds of thousands of sales and being shut down with no explanation. Now, there was one explanation that the one seller did get back and it was really shocking. And it really, if I was on the Etsy board of directors, I would want to know this. And Josh Silverman, if you ever do get to watch this, listen up because this is the livelihood of the platform. There was a gentleman who sold on Etsy. And I believe he's back on after three times being kicked off had over 120,000 sales selling dog collars. Great reviews, great, great business, a great asset for the Etsy platform. Doing everything that Etsy wants him to do. Creating handmade, okay, just like the originals did, the OGs, handmade products, dog collars, 120,000 sales. He opened up a couple of other shops just to kind of try other things. One account got let go, just hadn't logged into it in a while. And he had an outstanding bill for like $8. Etsy shut all of his stores down, including the one that was 120,000 sales. And get this, it was just before Q4 which would have made him a lot of money. But guess what? It would have made Etsy a lot of money. Why? Why was he not able to get in front of or to get on the phone with a human? All he got back was a template that was sent from probably a third-party support VA in another country that was told, if you see... Someone's other account that's de delinquent, even if it's only by eight bucks, shut them down, all of them, ban them. What business person thinks that that's okay? So our, our thing here, Josh and Etsy, if you're listening, Etsy sellers need to be heard. They need someone to talk to. I mean, Amazon has, they have people that they can talk to. If I have a problem with my account, I can call someone and get someone on the phone. There is no way that an Etsy seller can talk to a human being. So what we're doing here on this video is we're trying to get your attention, to let you know we love your platform. We wanna support your platform, but we want you to support us. And the way that you can do that is to give us live support, people that we can actually have a human conversation with. So right now, the people that are here, the sellers that are here, they're gonna leave comments of their story. They're gonna, they're gonna basically sign something by dropping a comment. So guys, if you are watching, this is the time. Make sure that you let Josh Silverman, the CEO, or Etsy, or whoever's in charge over there. We want to be heard. We want support. We want to be able to talk to someone. If you suspend a listing, why? Let us know. What did we do wrong? Okay. Where was the mishap? Because we can fix it. If you let us know, and especially for accounts that have been open for a while, and then you go ahead and you just shut them down because there was an account that was set up three years before that, that was let go that you guys could clearly see no one's been selling on it. No one's been selling on it. And it's $8 delinquent. And you're like, you take it up amongst yourself, which you didn't, you had a, a bot do it. But if you had a human do it, they'd go, wait a minute here. Wait, whoa, $8 over here. Hasn't been active in forever. This account, not really doing anything. This account, 120,000 sales, about to hit Q4. Last 
Q4, they did $300,000. Um, let's give them a call. Wouldn't that have been the better thing? Like in the comments, let Etsy know, let Josh Silverman know. Does that sound like that's something that they should be doing? Is that something that they should implement into the system? Okay. Now, Josh, I, I don't want to, I don't want to play it as, as I'm just bashing you. Cause I'm not, I think it's a great platform. And I think you want to do well. And I love the gift mode. Everyone loves the gift mode. They love the energy that you're pouring into that, but we need the energy poured also into supporting the sellers with human beings that they can talk to. So our request here today, mine and everyone that is going to be watching this video, commenting on this video, this is our, this is our way of speaking out. And if you are watching this, anyone that is an Etsy seller and you want live support, you want to speak to a human, you want answers. Now's your time. Drop it in the comments. Let let them know your thoughts. What do you want to see them do to help you be more successful on the Etsy platform? So that's what I wanted to come here with. Chris, we can open up the discussion here and we can hear stories. And if you guys do have stories of what happened to you, drop them in the comments as well. I want this to be a resource. I want this to be a video that gets attention. So this way here, we can let Etsy know we're real people. And if you watched his video uh, for, uh, I believe, believe it was Tag Pup is the name of the brand. I think it's Val or Valve. Uh, no, I forget his name now. I, I don't want to screw up his name, but he supports his family using the proceeds from the shop, right? And the business that he's built to help Etsy become successful too. And then you just get wiped out just before the holidays. Man, that was a blow. So let us know in the comments if you got any, any stories that you want to share with the people and you want to be heard, drop it in the comments. And also make sure that you like this video because if you do, you are supporting it and you are also going to help us get more reach in the YouTube algorithm. All right, Chris, I know that was a lot there. I went on a little bit of a, of a, a little bit of a tangent, but I think it, I needed to speak up for the people. You had to get you had to get something off your chest, and there's there's one addition I want to make to that, Scott, and it's not just about having support because the argument, and I think Josh would probably agree with me on this. Uh, I'm just going to pretend we're on a first name basis with the CEO, yeah. uh, Mr. Silverman, right? That that Josh would agree with us on is that you know they do offer support. You have chat. The problem is when you get someone on chat, and there's been an, a lot of these issues recently the people who are on chat support don't know Etsy's policies and actually give, and we have lots of examples of this, advice that is counter to the terms of service or totally incorrect based on what you say in the seller handbook. And so I know a lot of the concentration has been on seller education. And I think that's a good initiative to have, right? That's, Scott, why you and I are here. We're here to help educate sellers. The thing you and I don't have any control over, right? We can help Etsy interpret their policies. We can help share how the SEO algorithm works by reading the documentation. The place where sellers have zero control is over where you give the education to the people working in the support department. If I can't get a reliable answer from somebody at support as to why my account was suspended, as to whether or not I should duplicate a listing for a specific reason, as to whether or not it's okay to sell a product uh, that is explicitly banned somewhere in your handbook as a type of product that I can't sell on the platform and, and chat support tells me it's fine. And then you suspend my account. Well, that's because you've given me bad advice and you're missing the education portion of this on the inside. So as much as I'd like to have phone support and as much as I think that is important moving forward, the most important portion of this to me is to have knowledgeable support staff. And I think the focus on AI here has been in the wrong direction, right? The, we've, at least from an outward appearance, Scott, where Etsy has really been relying on AI is to help them manage things at scale, right? So they're forcing you into a chatbot and maybe eventually you get to a human being after you scream, give me a person, give me a person, give me a person 400 times. And where they're focusing their, their AI efforts right now are on the chatbot, are on avoiding the support tickets and on trying to manage things. And I know we have a lot of things to manage at scale, but with all of the opportunities to have AI, can we not create an answers database for the support people so that when you ask a question about something that is located somewhere in the seller handbook, that they don't give an incorrect answer? 
I think the answer is yeah. And it's really not even that complex of a task to do if you're focused on the right things. And this is not to say that Etsy's doing everything wrong, right? There's a lot of things that you are doing right as Etsy, as the CEO of Etsy. The problem is we're focusing on all of the growth, the growth initiatives, taking more of the gifting market. Great goal. But we're forgetting and we're forsaking a lot of the things that are important to the people who make the platform, who are not just the buyers, but the sellers. And we're giving a lot of lip service to sellers saying, hey, we're making these things better. And we, you, you are making improvements on the back end. The problem is you're missing the most important portion. And it seems to be getting worse, not better. And Scott, I know you've seen a lot of videos over the last few weeks come out about people having weird chat interactions. I know we've seen a few pop up of people just getting completely wrong answers. That should never happen. No. And it's entirely preventable. If we focus just a few dollars and a little bit of resources on creating a actual database that real human beings can access mm -hmm. and give you the answer when they need to, or give you more follow-up on that when you have a follow-up question and not just copy and paste from a section. Yep. And I know there's probably a legal answer in there somewhere. Well, we can't tell you exactly what you did because it opens up a liability. Then you've written your terms of service incorrectly. If they are not readable by a human being, if they're not understandable by a human being, and we have to sit around and wonder what's going on, then you've done it incorrectly. And what we should be seeing from a support perspective is a human readable way and a human conversation for us to understand what is okay, what isn't, what happened, what didn't, right? We're not asking for the sun and the moon. All we're asking is for the ability to communicate with a human being who actually knows the answers to the platform's most common questions without having to do some weird Google translate that then changes the meaning of the actual answer. So again, it's not to say that they're not doing anything correctly. They're doing a lot of things well for sellers, but we're dropping the ball on the most important thing. And that's why that's the real reason, Scott, that I believe sellers are leaving the platform. It's not about Timu. It's not about pricing. It's not about those kinds of things. Yep. It's that people are afraid their business is going to get pulled away. And if they have a problem, there's no way to go. There's yep. nowhere to turn. And if they do get a human being, they don't know what the policies are. And right. there's a good chance they get a wrong answer that then leads them down a worse path uh, and, and takes them from somebody who might be suspended or get you know their first IP flag to somebody who gets automatically suspended because somebody in support said it was okay to sell that design. And it clearly has Mickey Mouse all over it or something right. like that. Yeah, yeah. No, again, like we want this here to be you, your voice. If you want your voice to be heard, you will want to comment on this video. You'll want to like this video. Share it with anyone that you feel could help get the word out. You see, if we get more attention to this video, you are going to be able to potentially get the attention of who we need to really, really at least bring it up at the board meeting. That's all. I just want to see at the board meeting. So whoever has that, that ability, I want to talk to that person. It, and it's probably not Josh. It's probably going to be someone else, maybe even three levels down that can bring it to the board. Go, Hey, we got to talk about this. You know, there's a lot of sellers that were on this one video and they're calling out that they need this and they need that. That's what we want. Okay. So like this video, comment on this video, share your story as much as your story as you can put it in a comment. So this way here, if they want to use it, they can, and they can go ahead and share it with the board. Um, that's the main goal here today for what we wanted to do here. And hopefully we are successful at it. And we're not going to stop by the way, if this video doesn't do it, we'll do another one. All right. And we're just going to keep doing them. So this way here, we can hopefully get a little bit more human support. And I know it might be a human on the other end, but like someone said in the comments, it's just like a robot because they're just copy and paste, copy and paste. We want to actually have a, have a conversation with dialogue to let them look at our specific listing, our specific shop, our situation, and not just a carbon copy. Okay. And just a copy paste. All right. So if you want to be heard, leave a comment, like this video, share it with as many people as you can. So this way here, we can go ahead and, well, as Etsy sellers, we can be heard.